Okay, great. So hello everybody. A warm welcome from my side to the last presentation of today. So for those who haven't joined yesterday, um, my name is Stefan Borkert and I'm part of the customer support team located in Saarbeck, Germany. So very close to the campus to be soon. Um, and I was happy to see so many questions coming in on Dimitri's presentation. So today I will focus on the Inaptec Gateway 2.0 a bit more on universal communication modules, UCMs, and on blueprints as well. So I'm hoping I will be able to remove some barriers on that topic. So let's just start. Um, Mauro Cezana, I still hear your question on integrating external devices. So I'm happy to show you um, what you asked for, in fact. Um, in a bigger content, the gateway and the UCMs create a good chance to implement existing devices into Inoptus overall energy management system. Um, this enables us to set up any kind of rule-based automation and regulation in whatever setup you have. So some of these examples we have just seen in Dimitri's presentation, um, he showed some very nice showcases on what's doable with the energy management system. And on the slides that you see currently, um, you will realize that in the middle of everything, we have the Inaptic Gateway. So um, what is this gateway doing? It is the interface to all the DIN rail mounted modules, UCM modules that we have. And with that, we can adapt all the industry standards out there to collect data, um, process data, and with that, transfer it through the internet to the Inaptor cloud, and from there, show it in the individual spaces that we have. Um, so from the Inaptor cloud, we just talk of a, of a platform that collects and stores the data, and from there, it interfaces with um, the cloud used in the browser, the Inaptor app used on your mobile phone, but as well on, um, on things like push notifications if you want to be notified if anything is going wrong in your own setup. So what are we going to talk about today? Um, the gateway isn't a new thing. The gateway is around since a while already, and now the new setup of gateway 2.0 what is that about? What is the new features? And with that, it automatically comes to the question, what is a UCM? What is blueprints that we provide for that? So we are going to have a look to the blueprints. We are going to check out the Inapto marketplace for blueprints that were recently mentioned by Nikolai already. And, and we are going to show an example of these. So the marketplace for blueprints um, is placed in GitHub, and we are going to provide the link with the presentation, but you can as well address it directly from the, from the handbook pages that Philip was talking of. And there you get all the resources that you need to get started pretty easy. And another benefit of things that you can find there is um, blueprints that were developed with the help of our integrators, um, interested people, in communicating with fuel cells, inverters, batteries, sensors, power meters, and many, many more. So just to repeat on the gateway, what, what do we mean with that? So the, the gateway itself, it just, it's just a piece of software that you can start up, and this can be used as a base to do whatever you like um, in kind of applications. So in the past, Inapto was delivering um, a gateway together with a QR code with an image of our gateway software on it. Um, and some of you might have seen that already and interfaced with it. But now we're going in a different way. So with the gateway 2.0, we are still having the operating system, the gateway software, but we are not limiting you to the Enapta hardware. So we opened it up so that um, customers can reuse their own devices or purchase local um, hardware with specifications given by us. So just to repeat, in the past, we were limited to the Inapta hardware. And now with the gateway 2.0, we just provide hardware requirements and give a, 
um, and gives the customers a chance to reuse the existing hardware. That's pretty important and pretty helpful for everybody. Um, Enapta made some good experience with the Intel NUC hardware. Um, Philip mentioned that as well. So all the requirements for the hardware we have on the handbook page. And this is just an example where we have a lot of experience with. So that is a recommendation from our end to, to start with such, but you are free to, to choose whatever you want, unless it, it covers a requirement for our gateway software. And what is the gateway doing in fact? So um, you are you are guided by a by a wizard to set up whatever you like, and I'm I'm going to talk a bit more about that, what it means. So what I show here is uh, the gateway 2.0 setup wizard. So in the first step, we already flashed the gateway image that you can download from our firmware page. In the second step, um, we started up the Intel NUC in our case. And during that time, we had to connect an external monitor, a keyboard, just to do the initial setup. setup. And that's not just for the configuration, it's as well on, on the hardware settings. So some devices need um, adjustment in, in BIOS settings to be able to power up automatically if you have a power loss. Otherwise, whenever you have a drop in power, your gateway wouldn't be available after that. So, so some settings needs to be done in the BIOS um, so that you automatically power up after a power interruption. Yeah, after doing that, um, you just boot up your gateway. You find the IP address with some easy commands that are as well documented on the handbook page. And then you're good to go. So you're just going to um, access this setup wizard from your preferred browser. You're typing in the IP address and then you have a welcome screen that takes you there. Um, so you on the left side, you can easily see that there's two modes that the gateway can operate in. In the past, we were limited to, um, to the gateway being connected to the Inaptor cloud. But as more and more customers were asking for island modes, so a mode without having an internet connection, this is integrated now as well. And it can be chosen during the, um, during the setup of the, of the gateway. Um, in my case, I was choosing um, the setup to be connected to the, to the cloud, just to be able to use whatever data I'm, I'm going to configure soon um, from the app itself. So what it does then is, is um, waiting for the connection itself, establishing the connection. And in the end, on the right-hand side here, you see that it is successfully connected and ready to be used. Um, just a side note. So if you, if during this process, you face any issue, and that's not just for the Inupta gateway, it's as well for electrolysis dryers and so on. There's a very nice, helpful new app available for Android phones. Um, that enable you to analyze the network you try to connect through. And what I'm talking of is the Inapta Diagnostics app. So as said, currently it's just available for Android phones. Um, but what is it doing? Um, so all our devices communicate on 2.4 gigahertz Wi-Fi environments. Um, each of these Wi-Fi uh, networks is configured by administrator, by personal experience users, um, or whatever. So they are all, um, there, there is a lot, uh, huge set of variations in these setups. So what the Inapta uh, Diagnostic app can help with is if you are good to go to connect to the Inapta cloud. So what you're just doing is you connect to the Wi-Fi that you try to connect your device to, in the next step, you run the app and it's checking for the steps for cloud, NTP, and MQTT, as well as api.inapto.com. If all of these sites are available, if they are, you are ready to go. If they are not, there's some suggestions. So it would just tell you. And here on the right side, you have an example. So it simply tells you, you are on a five gigahertz um, Wi Fi connection. So please change that. And then you, you are getting guidance on, on what you need to do, if you need to set up a 2.4 gigahertz or what could be other steps. And as well, you can share these results um, directly with us, with the customer support team. 
So whenever you face communication issues that provisioning of devices is interrupting because it tells you that there is a Wi-Fi pro, um, problem, this could be of great help for you. And now taking a step back to the UCMs, universal communication modules. So what are these components doing? They are small electrical components being mountable on, um, on the DIN rail, on standard DIN rails. And they translate whatever protocol into a language that our gateway and our cloud can, can work with. So in the past, we were limited, uh, limiting that to hardware modules. Um, so you see RS485, you see RS232, you see CAN modules, but as well, you have analog input modules, digital input output modules. And the one that I want to focus on a bit today is the Ethernet extension module. So when you were planning to communicate with Ethernet modules in the past, there was a need to have that device. Um, but since we started to have virtual UCMs as well, especially for the Ethernet part, there's a good chance now to use a virtual Ethernet module and communicate with whatever you have in the same network. Um, these modules, they come pre-configured. Nevertheless, they need some kind of configuration. And that is exactly where the blueprints come in. So the blueprints are the knowledge of the devices. This is where you do the configuration and scaling of whatever you want to talk to. And blueprints seem, it might be a bit confusing what I show on the screen, but this is just the current setup of the Inaptor marketplace. And um, what I've chosen there is a device that is called SMR, SMA, so SMA is a vendor. And it is, in fact, an inverter for a photovoltaic um, setup. So in this case, it's called Sunny Boy. And there's three files that belong to this blueprint. So there's a manifest file, there's a firmware file, and Nicolai mentioned it before, it's a Lua file. And like always, there's a readme file to start with to understand what you, what you should do with all of this content. And there's some nice descriptions on why that blueprint was created, um, who developed it, for which use case, and which purpose. Um, so this is really a good overview on where you can reuse such blueprint. Or if you want to start your own one and upload it, it's there, you're welcome to do so. So um, driven by some technical interest, I just decided to set up this thing my own. So um, including a virtual USM for my solar inverter. And with that, you can see it on the picture. So what we combine or what I combine there is a solar inverter. So the red one in the middle, um, a virtual UCM communicating to it a blueprint that translates everything from, from it. And it is connected to a solar carport that you just see in the middle of it. So I just created my own Stefan Solar Carport site in the Anapta Cloud. I created a virtual UCM that is down there. And all of that you can just do by requesting access to it and start um, setting up your own devices. Um, as a first time user during that time, I was as well following the steps described in the Anapta Handbook page. And all, just to repeat, started again with setting up the nuke, flashing the gateway, booting up the device for the first time. And after that, I created the UCM, the virtual UCM, in my case, for the inverter. So blueprints are there, just to see on the left side, solar inverter, blueprint, UCM, everything ready to start. So. Let's see what the blueprint is. This is how the blueprint um, looks in an extra tab of the Inapta Cloud. You see it here in the middle. It is a blueprint tab that we can enable for your special user. Um, and it gives you an interface to 
edit and to, to configure and to develop your own special use cases with a predefined structure. All of that is as well doable by just editing everything in a, in a notepad file and upload it manually. But I would suggest, especially for the first time users, go to this predefined user interface to really make it easy to, for you to, to enter into the programming of blueprints. Um, each blueprint, as you have seen before in the marketplace, it consists of two files. There's one called the manifest file, which is used for basic definitions, variable declarations, and so on. And the, the Lua file itself, in my case, it's called the firmware.lua. Um, this is used to customize and to scale your, your personal device. So I'm, I'm going to go into a bit of more, more details for that in a few minutes. And um, once this is all set up, so you are ready to upload it. So you have an upload button in that application as well. And then you can just upload the initial blueprint to your own device. And in my case, it was a virtual UCM module for Ethernet. What happens then? So after that, um, after that first initial upload, you can move to the virtual UCM from the cloud. So just to reflect, we are in devices, we are in my site, and now we are in the UCM that is called Solar Carport. Um, in my example, I did the initial upload and hoped for, for a lot of data, but in fact, nothing came up. So there was a need to check and to customize everything. Um, how did I do that? Now, yeah, there is several steps to do. And the most important step, if you go for Ethernet communication and Modbus, in, in my example, you need to check whom you are communicating to. So the minimum to define is the Modbus IP, for sure, the Modbus IP of your inverter, and the unit ID, which can be found in the documentation. This time it's not in Abdul, this time it's a vendor documentation. So in my case, the local IP was defined, the port is clear for Modbus, it's 502. And the Modbus ID for the given inverter was simply defined as three. So I edited everything here in the command bar. And I was storing and uploading that. Once you edit that in the mask and you run it, it will automatically be stored to the virtual UCM and will be active at that time. And now it's getting a bit more complex. So the same checks you need to do for your data. So uh, I had to adjust the Modbus registers in my case. Um, these can be taken again from the vendor's documentation and it reflects the, it is reflected in the firmware Lua file. So what do we see here? On the, on the top, I have an extract of the Modbus register table that was provided by SMA. So it's showing me the amps, the volts, and the, the watts delivered. It's, it's getting me data types. And it's an example in German in this case. But it's getting me data types that I need to use. And all of that you see reflected down there in the Lua file. So the low, lower part here, that's an extract of what you see in the Blueprint tab in the cloud. So if you want to read out the DCMs, you just have a type of um, a data tape type of S32 with a fix of three, and you have a register number of 30769, which you just find here as defined by the vendor. Um, and once you adjusted that, and you don't just do it for real time data, you do it as well for status messages and so on, um, you're good to, to do another upload again. So, what happens then? Let's see. This is what it ends in. So what I opened here, and this is just a screenshot of it, I opened the solar carport dashboard. So the dashboard you know already well from our other devices. And it's comparable, but in this case, it's customized for the solar carport. So um, up there in the bars, you just get some status details for the device. In my case, both are OK. I have online communication, everything ready. 
And down there, this is confirmed because I'm getting the data for the six Modbus registers that were configured up front. Um, the goodness of it is that you have the same data in your mobile application. So you can use it from wherever you want once you configure the site. Um, and in this case, as well, as mentioned before, you can set up push up, uh, can set up push, up notif push notifications, my God, from the app um, if everything goes wrong, if anything goes wrong. So then it would just um, throw you a message that something is wrong with your inverter and you need to check on that, comparable to what you have with other Inapta devices that are connected to it. Um, another helpful component for the setup and troubleshooting is Penny. sorry. Okay. So another helpful component for the setup and um, troubleshooting is the log files, live log files in the blueprint tab reflected here. So that shows you live results of what the virtual UCM is doing. Um, in this small extract here marked in blue, um, we see activities executed by myself. So this is actions, upload actions, and the associated process with it. And the white entries below, that's really getting you the, the live communication. So it's, um, it's reflecting what values, what kind of values you are getting from your interface. So from the inverter in my case. Um, so this is whenever it comes to troubleshooting in um, in changes in the in the um, numbers that you are reflecting or so, this is really helpful. So you can hide and show um, individual things, and it tells you exactly if if you did something wrong or if you need to improve on something. You even don't need to go to the dashboard. So if you see realistic values coming in here, you can be pretty certain that whatever you set up is the correct thing, and then you can enjoy the setup in your um, in your dashboard. So I hope this small session gave you some better understanding on what the Inapta Gateway UCMs and Blueprints can do for you. I would say thanks for listening and hopefully enjoy your first step with Inapta's energy management system and your first Blueprints. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Stefan, for nice uh, personal use case presentation. Yeah, I think uh, it's actually, uh, to be honest, I think it's a great example of how uh, open source and community uh, software can help uh, yeah, to, to minimize the time to, uh, to build the things. Okay, I think it's, it's a time for, for the questions, right? Yeah. So. yeah. What do you have? Okay, let's check. So the first question from Chris Alla. Um, don't you need the electrolyzers and dryer to be connected to the cloud so the support can do fixes? So great question, Chris. Um, yes, for sure. If you want to, to have remote support, um, it's much easier for us to have live data to see um, what your devices are doing and to analyze the telemetry to help you out. Um, but it's as well doing, uh, able it's as well possible to work in island mode and not to have that data, but then it would just take longer to, um, to get you a solution because it is um, much easier to, for us to work with data than it is um, for going back and forwards to ask questions, to request data from your end, to export from your local application. But in general, it's doable. Okay, thank you, thank you. Uh... Okay, second question from uh, Jia Shin. Um, can we change between the two operational modes after initial setup? For example, cloud to island or island to cloud. If no, then a gateway flash is required. Would the diagnostics, uh, I think th there is two questions in, in one um, message. Um, okay, and would the diagnostics app uh, will be available for iOS? So, yeah, and both I would leave for you, Nikolai, because okay. this is in fact moving between the modes. I never did that personally, so I cannot answer it. And the second one is clearly as well for you. 
Yeah, okay. So this is uh, this is a good question. Uh, unfortunately, no, you cannot uh, switch in between the modes. Uh, to switch between them, you do not need to reflash the gateway, but what you need to do, you need to make a reset. So, and you can do this using the web interface, which Stefan showed us. So you can you can go to the page, go to the settings, enter the password, reset, and then you can set up it again. Um, regarding the second question, uh, would the uh, diagnostic app will be available for the iOS? Um, yeah, so an after diagnostics app was uh, introduced just uh, in the beginning of the year. And uh, right now we are gathering the feedback and we are thinking if that's really needed for iOS or not, because most of the devices we see, the fragmentation of the devices is mainly the uh, Androids especially for initial setups. Okay, second question from Sebastian Alvarez. Is there a limit elements managed by a gateway? Um, okay, I, I think I, I'll take this question as well. So uh, if I understood correctly, uh, it's uh, about the limitation of number of I don't know, objects, virtual UCMs, uh, parameters, and so on, uh, telemetry. There is no limits in numbers, but there is a limit in hardware. So you need to understand that more data uh, you are trying to read, more uh, virtual UCMs to run, more computing power you need. So yeah, and usually you need to find the balance how, how to do this uh, the best way with the software. And there, there is a lot of options for that. If the general Intel NUC platform does not work, so it's possible to uh, to run the gateway uh, on any x86 computer. Yeah, they, there might be some problems with running it, but yeah, still, if you will require that, we we will be able to help you. So just drop a message to support. Okay, there is uh, one more question from. Uh, David uh, Bennett, can you control external devices in island mode? No, also, I'm not. I'm not sure if I fully get that that question. But um, as long as you're in island mode, it simply means that you are limited to your local network. So whatever is in there can be configured and controlled on the gateway. Whatever you might consider as external isn't part of the network, so cannot be accessed. If you want to distribute to several networks, then you need to to extend that to the cloud connected mode. Mm -hmm. Okay, thanks. Uh, thanks for the answer. I, I think I can extend the answer. So if I understood, uh, maybe the question is about the blueprinted devices. So for example, in island mode, you can use an up to electrolyzer, dryer, and um, water tank. Uh, and the question if the blueprint devices can work in island mode. So in this case, I would say for, for the moment, no, but we are working on that. So this would be extended. Okay, the next question is from Everin Turner. So when the island mode without internet connection, does the user interface is available on the gateway? I can take it also. So this is uh, this is a question about the uh, interface, third party interface uh, to gateway. Yes, you will be able to use MQTT uh, interface to, for example, acquire data about uh, electrolyzers, water tanks, and dryers. So it would be like an yeah umbrella service. Okay, uh, the next. Question from Paul uh, Hamhurst. Is it possible to get SMS alerts and alarms? Um, Stefan, do you think you can answer this? Um, currently, I'm not aware of us being able to send SMS. Perhaps we might consider that for the future, but I know that there's a lot of software existing on the market where you can pick up network communication and translate that into sending it to SMS if needed. But um, 
as all the things are distributed through um, the cloud connection already and you have that chance for push notifications, I think that is good enough to, to start it on your on your mobile phone. So whenever something happens, you will just have a pop-up <coughs> sorry, on your phone and you are notified that something ring, went wrong on your setup. Yeah, I think I think the same. So the, actually, uh, uh, I would say that uh, the last two presentations from Dmitry and from you, they are showing that you are actually not limited what you can integrate into uh, an APTA uh, energy uh, management system, right? So uh, in the previous example, we saw how the HTTP open weather service uh, was integrated. This means that, for example, you can use any online service uh, uh, for uh, for sending SMS or even making a calls, so you can you can make your blueprint for that, and uh, you can use it for uh, sending messages. Or even if you want, you can use uh, uh, a 3G modem which is connected over RS485 interface to uh, to uh, to the uh, an APTA UCM, and then you also can create a blueprint to send SMSs using AT commands. Okay, thanks for Let's the question. Add on. So Max is just typing that in. There's some customers out there that use their individual um, PLCs already to send SMS. So there's a lot of solutions out there on the market that can be integrated with the onboard part of the gateway. We don't have that yet. <laughs> 